is Heidi Moore. I'm the treasurer of the St. Mary's County Science and Engineering Fair Board, and today is our um, 52nd annual St. Mary's County Science and Engineering Fair. Uh, we have over 100 students entered in the fair today, and um, we've got cat uh, 17 different categories in the junior and senior divisions. So we have junior students from 6th through 8th grade, and we have senior students from 9th through 12th grade entered. Hi, this is my project. I wanted to do a science fair experiment to see whether people could differentiate between real and fake smiles. And there's one thing that really you can t use to tell the two apart is the eyes. A Duchenne smile is a genuine smile which takes care of these muscles, the orbicularis oculi, and the zygomaticus major muscles. So this would be this. You can see the crow's feet forming on the side of the face. But a non Duchenne smile would just be around this area, which would be. Whereas this, you see the small um, wrinkles right here on this woman's face. You can see, you can see that how there's no wrinkles here, but when you see here, there's a small crow's feet. It's a scary world out there. You don't know who you can trust. But with this, you can tell a little bit more who's fake and who's not fake. Which I thought was. Interesting. Hello, I am Nick Raglan. I'm from Father Rancher White, and I'm in eighth grade. And what I did here was I called my project Yeast Feast because yeast usually feasts on the sugar that it takes in to make it grow and produce carbon dioxide. So what I did in this project was I took these tubes right here and I filled them up with water and these bottles here, I filled it up with the yeast solution and fed this tube up into the graduated cylinders. And I would have the yeast grow with the sugars and the different sugar substitutes that I used to see how well they would compare with each other. And I was doing this because I have a diabetic friend and he likes baked goods. So I was wondering if he would be able to use any of these few sugar substitutes here. And I found that true, my diabetic friend would use sweet low here to bake bread and he wouldn't have to use his insulin pump. Hi, I'm Connor Alsheimer and this is my project Lichtenberg Lightning. Um, what I did is I, I was, my dream for this was, my inspiration was to control lightning. I did. Is I use, um, I used the Van Graaff generator, I set it up so that there's a wire going from the discharge rod to this setup here which I put a needle on the uh, on the acrylic sheet and turned on the Van Graaff generator so that, discharge, so that it discharged onto the plate. Then I turned off the Van Graaff generator and I blew toner over the image. Now the toner collects where the charge was and, um, and it shows where the uh, figure showed up. So when looking at, I, I looked, I separated um, each figure, uh, I found the fractal dimension in each quadrant um, because I wanted to see how the fractal dimension and the area covered by it in each quadrant was affected by where the magnet is. So um, when I did that, I, I gathered all my data and I found that there was no consistent pattern in the data. Now, if I were able to do this bigger and stronger and with stronger magnets and more energy, maybe there would be an effect. Um, I I did uh, talk to a professional who does this for, uh, like for a living. They make figure, uh, Lichtenberg figures, uh, three dimensional ones. Now they use uh, they had to use a four story tall. Uh, particle accelerator, which I happen to not have in my backyard. My name is Rapali Shaw. I go to Spring Ridge Middle School, and I did an engineering project. My project is pretty much based on the concept, if you're driving, and then someone in front of you presses on their brakes, you don't necessarily know how fast or how slow they're going to come to a stop. They could stop right then and there, or they could drive for a little bit and then come to a stop. So I tried to build something that showed the brake, this is the brake model, and the amount of force related to the light bulbs that go on. And as you press down on the brake, this is the brake model. 
you can't see it because there's no battery, but there's six different lights in the back, and there's six different switches. And as this metal slider comes in contact with each of the switches, the light bulbs turn on in a clockwise order. So if you're pressing down on the brakes all the way, and you see six lights come on, then you know that that person is going to stop right then and there. And if you see like one or two lights come on, then you know they're going to take a while to come to a stop. So it will help a driver in the back of another driver estimate when they need to step on their brakes and how hard or how long.